Glass fiber ABS in four different colors, but which one is the strongest? Is there any difference? Let's find out. Additionally, I have two new types of the testing, and also I have a question for you. Hello, welcome to my tech fan to another filament testing video. A few months ago, I compared Bamboo Lab ABS versus ASC filaments, and only one week later, I saw that the glass fiber version of the ABS appeared. I wrote to Bamboo Lab that pity I didn't know about it earlier, and uh, having a video only about one filament would be a little bit boring. And I asked him maybe they could send me two colors. Well, instead of two, they sent me four colors. So I have here white, gray, black, and red color. So we will see the effect of the color to the strength. This means that these four spools are sent to me by Bamboo Lab, but I'm not paid anything about this. Uh, I'm not sure, does it count as a sponsored video? I mean, from your aspect, it doesn't matter. I would create completely equal video if it would be sponsored or not. Now let's talk about the glass fiber ABS. First about my experience. I noticed that uh, adding these fibers, glass or carbon fibers, to any material will always help with the printability. We will have less warping, so they make sense with uh, those uh, high temperature filaments like ABS, uh, nylon, polycarbonate and similar. Now, in most cases, uh, they will make a little bit weaker the material. Now, here, according to the website, the parameters will be better of glass fiber versions compared to the regular ABS. Uh, only two parameters I noticed that they will be weaker. The one is the, on the impact test, so this means that the glass fiber version is a little bit more brittle material. It is true for the X, Y and also for the Z axis. I'm not measuring the Z axis impact strength, um, maybe I should in the near future, we will see. And the second is unfortunately the layer attention, which I already mentioned that I experienced this, because these fibers will actually reduce the cross section. They are not too long that they will help those layers to hold together, but I hope the difference will not be too big. Don't forget, because of those glass fibers, it is recommended to use some kind of harder steel or similar nozzle, because the regular brass nozzle may wear out too quickly. On the boxes, we can see some information. These are colors. The recommended print temperature is between 240 and 270 degrees Celsius, but I will use a different settings in the Bamboo Studio. And also I can see the drying conditions, 80 degrees Celsius between 8 and 12 hours. I'm not sure if Bamboo Lab knows that we don't have this kind of filament dryer on the market. Um, I will not dry them, I will print out of the box, but maybe Bamboo Lab should create some filament dryer which is able to dry the filament on high temperatures too. Uh, soon I will have that comparison video of six filament dryers, but here the max temperature is 70 degrees Celsius. And we have some research on my university on the department and uh, drying of the nylon, for example, on 70 degrees Celsius, it is possible, but it would be significantly faster on 80 or 90 degrees Celsius. More about that in a separate video. Looks like they arrive in these resealable bags, and don't forget to cut this above the ceiling line. I'm not sure if you remember the problem I mentioned several times in my earlier videos, when the ceiling line was on the other smaller side. And with that, uh, very often users will cut uh, on the wrong side, ruin the bag. But now, look at this. I believe that this is nice improvement from the Bamboo Lab, that now the ceiling line is on the bigger side. So this is the white version, and it arrived on the spool, which can be dried up to 90 degrees Celsius. We can see the information here. And as you can see, after the filament is glued, and usually they do this with the brittle filament. They didn't use the holes. Mm -hmm. Quite brittle. The bending test. Okay, this will not break inside the Teflon tube. I already mentioned that I will not dry them, the printing will be out of the box. This means I will take out these filaments only before the printing. And I'm starting with the white version and I'm printing everything on Bamboo Lamp X1 Carbon. And now let's see the objects in the Bamboo Studio. And I will have some new test objects too for the testing. They are printed vertically. And let's check the settings, default settings, 270 degrees Celsius on the nozzle and 90 degrees Celsius on the bed surface. And here you can see the cooling is between 10 and 30%. And this is preview of the printing. As you can see, these objects are completely solid inside. Nice white color and I'm using the engineering plate with the glue stick on it. And the printing will be from the open air. I will use the same G-code for each printing. 
And this is a time-lapse speed-up video of approximately 1 hour printing. Later I will show you some footage of the real-time speed. White color is finished, perfectly striked each object, absolutely no warping. And I can move to the next material. End of the filament is glued, I didn't use the hose because it is too brittle. And it goes back to the resealable bag. The next one is grey color. And as you can see the printing is in progress, I am using the same G-code here. I will just show you a few seconds, full speed of the CD printing. And I know this combination, engineering plate and the glue stick works very well. Until it's hot, uh, it sticks very good, but even when it cools down, it will be still attached to the bed because of that glue stick. And with some flexing, I can remove the objects. Well, it's hard to do with one hand. The next one is in black color. It is hard to see through this glass, but the printing looks great. And the fourth filament in this video is in this nice red color. But be careful, it's brittle like other colors too. The Exxon Carbon is checking the first layer, <laughs> but there is no need. This is glass fiber ABS. Last two minutes of printing and absolutely no issues with any of these filaments. Ready for mechanical testing. I'm starting with tensile or pulling tests with the horizontally printed test objects. White. 61 average. Gray. Stronger a little bit, 67. Black 66 Red 65 So only the white was a little bit weaker compared to the other three. Layer adhesion test with vertically printed test objects 34, this is good for the ABS Gray 35 Black. Mm, 30 kilograms. This one is a little bit weaker. The red. 33. <laughs> so this time the black was a little bit weaker compared to the other three. The shared test diameter 5 millimeters, and beside this horizontally, first time I have this vertically printed test objects too. Here you can see my test equipment. Side by side, all four, these are horizontally printed, very strong in all four cases. The glass fibers really helps their orientation. And thanks to my helper, I could find all flyaway parts too. And now these are printed in vertical position, so the layer adhesion is very important here. And I was quite surprised, so 90 kilograms, this is quite strong for this test. And now I torque or twist test with these horizontally printed test objects. And for the first time I have the same test objects printed vertically. Request from my better supporters, but actually they just woke up the curiosity in me. And what do you think? How much weaker will be these objects printed vertically? The dimension is same compared to those printed horizontally. You'll be surprised. And usually I'm measuring the load at 90 degree rotation and the maximum load. But probably these in vertical position will break more suddenly. So here probably I can measure only the maximum load. And usually for this I'm uh, using this digital torque meter. But I also bought a new toy from the Amazon. This is analog torque meter. The range is only between 0.3 and 3 newton meters, but the accuracy is bigger. But uh, I will not use it this in this video because first I have to learn a little bit more about it. And I think I need a little bit uh, more precision for the rotating. So in this video so far, I'm using this torque meter. Let me know if you would like to see some kind of test and review of this tool. Side by side all four test objects and the load at 90 degree rotation is very similar. The max rotation was approximately 90 degree angle and here the load was between 1.1 and 1.2 Newton meters. So what do you think? What will be the max load for these vertically printed test objects? <laughs> Side by side all four test objects and the result for the first one you already saw. 
<laughs> for this white version, you saw I forget to enable the torque meter. This wouldn't happen if I would use the analog one, but for the filling, completely the same in all four cases. So if you don't mind, I will enter here exactly the same value, which is 1.2 Newton meters. Now, this was interesting. As you can see, very similar numbers, similar brake loads, but they broke completely differently. Until this, in horizontal position, they can twist a little bit. In this case, only 90 degree angle, but sometimes I can do much more. Until these, printed in vertical position, broke on similar loads, but more suddenly. And now the impact test with these notch test objects and a half kilogram hammer to see is there any bigger difference between these materials. Theoretically, they should be more brittle compared to the regular ABS, but we will see soon. Uh, by the way, one of my impact testing machines arrived. Yes, one of them, because I ordered one from the eBay and I thought I was scammed. I even got a refund. So I ordered another one, digital, a little bit expensier. But in the meantime, even the first one arrived. So, okay, too long story for this video. If there is any request, then I can make a review video about those impact testing machines. White. Gray. Black. Red. Zero position. The brake is very similar. Two parts are still attached with each other. Now let's analyze the numbers. This is the zero position of the hammer. And watch carefully because you may hardly notice the changes. So this is after breaking the whitest objects, the gray, black, and the red one. Hardly notice any difference between them. So the repeatability is quite good here. And this is the reason why I have only one test object in this kind of test. And this is the average distance from the zero position. This is the age which I will use to calculate the braking energy, which I will show you in the results part. For functional materials, the dimensional accuracy is very important. So beside these glass fiber versions, I have these regular materials too. This is Bamboo Lab ABS, ASA, and these are glass fiber materials, gray, white, and the red one. It is quite obvious why these glass fiber materials are better for printing, but also they are much better for dimensional accuracy. Three point bending test. Here you can see my setup where all loads are placed, but I replace them one by one and I measure the deformation after 130 and 60 seconds. Here you can see side by side all four colors. This is speed up video, currently under 5 kg load. 10 kilograms. And after this test, I can see very minimal permanent deformation, hardly noticeable. The creep test the deformation under the concert load, which will be 1.25 kilograms. These are a similar initial deformation on all four objects. Let's measure them. 1409 interesting 1371 1388 1437 I've measured them every day this is now the fifth one 1477 1461 1447 1468 and now let's remove the load and now they look very equal I cannot see any difference between them the temperature test in the oven this is the sensor and I have here m10 nut as a small load and I want to record the temperature of the first deformation this is a time-lapse speed up video and very similar start of the deformation at approximately 97, 98 degrees Celsius. I stopped the experiment at approximately 140 degrees Celsius. Let's see how soft they are. First, let's remove the load. For the filling, very similar, all four. And even their deformation looks similar. The varying test, I presented this apparatus a few months ago. Load is 2.5 kilograms and diameter of the shaft is 6 millimeters. This is now the gray test object. Black, red one. And after exactly 3000 repeats, 
I can measure the depth of the groove. Here you can see side by side and the deepest groove I can measure on white test objects. But even visually I can see that the deepest groove is on this color. So many data, let's summarize them in this Excel table, which you can download from mytechfun.com website. But for my Patreon supporters, I'm adding these four lines to that summary table, so they can easily compare these results to those which I did in previous videos. Let's start with the creep test. So these are uh, the directly measured values, distance between two reference surfaces. But what they need is the difference between two days, and that's what we can see on this graph. And here we can see that uh, they are very similar. Maybe on the first day we can see some difference. The red has the smallest uh, creeping, but if you watch the first initial deformation, the red uh, had the biggest deformation, and later it slowed down. Tensile test, very similar values here. White was slightly weaker on the Lahir Tejan test, again very similar values, but this time the black was a little bit weaker. On the shear stress, well, for the first time I had these test objects printed in horizontal position, but also in the vertical position. Here the Lahir Tejan is very important. Similar values, but what is interesting that uh, here I expected much smaller brake loads, so this was quite strong for this test. 3-point bending test, and here we can see the deformation under these loads after 30 seconds. Similar values, but uh, let's take a look of this graph, which is more interesting, because here we can see the deformation under these loads after 1, 30 and 60 seconds. Uh, similar values, maybe on the highest load we can see some bigger difference, and here the black one was the best. Torque or twist test, and again uh, I had uh, for the first time this printed in horizontal and vertical position. And interesting, the brake loads was very similar, approximately 1.2 newton meters. Of course, this printed in vertical broke more suddenly. Horizontally printed broke after approximately 90 degree rotation, but the brake load was similar in all four cases. On the impact test, uh, very similar brakes, and this is more brittle compared to the regular ABS. On the temperature test, no difference here, all four started to deform at approximately 97 degrees Celsius. And on a shrinking test, similar values with these glass fiber versions, and interesting compare them with the regular ABS and ASA. So here we can see that these are much better for the dimensional accuracy, and they are also easier for printing because they will not warp so much. On the varying test, very similar values. Only on white one I could measure a little bit deeper groove, so it is less wear resistant. Another huge work is finished. I was really curious about this material, so that's why I increased here number of the testings. But watching the view tendency of my filament testing videos, maybe I should reduce the work. But don't worry, I'm doing this for myself too. And also I can see most of my Patreon supporters like this kind of videos. How about this glass fiber ABS? There is no significant difference in mechanical properties between the colors. Overall, it is good material, good layer adhesion, great resistance to bending and temperature. It is more brittle material compared to the regular ABS, and it is also more sensitive to moisture. So don't forget to store it on a dry place. The printing is easier with this material compared to the regular ABS. All my printings were successful on the first attempt. Here you can see some time lapses side by side. Additionally, with this material, we have better dimensional accuracy. How about my future plans? From Bebolet filaments, the polycarbonate, black and transparent color. So again, we will see some uh, color comparison here. After this, the nylon, glass and carbon fiber reinforced. And here I want to test 0.4 and 0.6 mm nozzle 2 to see if there will be any difference in strength. And here we go again. I'm increasing the amount of the work, but I'm curious about it myself. And of course, there are many other brands already here waiting for the review. I hope you will subscribe, click that notification bell button too, and I hope you will follow me with all my future videos. Thank you for watching and happy printing!